This week on IUP News Center, a recap of all the homecoming events this past weekend. Also, Indiana's local hospital, IRMC, celebrates their 100th anniversary. Plus, your latest updates in sports and entertainment right here on the IUP News Center. Welcome to IEP News Center. I'm Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. Indiana University of Pennsylvania kicked off its 2014 homecoming activities on Thursday, October 9th, with a concert by Chance the Rapper at Ed Fry Arena Saturday. October 11th was the annual parade through Indiana where many folks gathered on the sidewalks to watch marching bands, floats, and many other interesting group performances. The Crimson Hawks won the football game at Frank Signetti Field on Saturday as well. It was a quiet homecoming weekend for the Indiana Police Department. A handful of arrests but no major incidents left officials praising security measures put in place for homecoming weekend here at IUP. IUP officials, along with Indiana Borough leaders, said Sunday they were pleased that student behavior was held in check during the homecoming activities. IUP police reported 39 incidents Saturday night and Sunday morning, including 14 that were alcohol-related, according to a school spokeswoman, Michelle Freiling. Indiana Borough Police responded to 94 calls, far exceeding its daily average of 27, but none were too incredibly serious. Indiana Regional Medical Center will be celebrating 100 years of service this Saturday, October 18th. There will be a complimentary cocktail reception, dinner, cash bar, and a special musical performance by the Vogues. The celebration will be held at the Kovolchik Convention and Athletic Complex Center. S tickets are $60 per person or $120 per couple and can be purchased at the HR department on the IRMC campus located at 875 Hospital Road in Indiana or you can purchase tickets at the Kovolchik Center box office at 711 Pratt Drive. After seven months into a $1.2 million overhaul of Instant Check, Pennsylvania's gun check system, gun dealers and sheriffs are reporting fewer delays and shutdowns with the system maintained by police. Many cite computer access to the system that runs background checks on prospective gun owners to determine whether applicants are wanted under outstanding warrants, prohibited from owning a weapon because of felony conviction, a drug conviction, three DUI convictions within five years, or an education of mental incompetence. Although hard numbers on the system won't be released until spring, state police believe more than 2,163 licensed firearm dealers would use computers to run checks. In 2013, the system handed 1.1 million transactions, nearly a 10% increase from 2012. The system, designed to handle 1.2 million checks, was prone to outages, particularly when demand was high, critics said. A proposed bill to forego instant check and to instead use the National Instant Criminal Background System at no charge has been referred to the House Judiciary Committee. Now here's Mike Gosnell with a field report, followed by a short break. Despite the fears of local officials and campus police, this past weekend's homecoming activities at Indiana University of Pennsylvania were calmer than in past years. Compare the numbers to, IU, uh, to the IU Patties celebrations of last year, 96 calls and 25 arrests were made this past weekend, substantially lower than what happened last year during the IU Patty celebration, which left a negative light on the university. For IUP TV News Center, I'm Mike Gosnell. Back to you in the studio.
Welcome back to IUP TV News Center. The IUP student responsible for the stabbing on Oakland Avenue was released on a $50,000 bond. William Rivera, the recently withdrawn student from IUP, stabbed a man outside of his car window last month. The victim, Giovanni Brown, was standing outside of Rivera's car window when he was stabbed. He then fled to the local Papa John's where the ambulance was called. Brown was then taken to Indiana Regional Medical Center and later moved to the Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh. Rivera was released from District Judge Guy Harville's office on a $50,000 bond. He has now been sent home to his parents in Virginia. Enrollment has decreased yet again here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. This is the second straight year of decline after a four-year-long record-breaking enrollment stretch. The decrease puts IUP at its lowest enrollment in five years. Undergraduate attendance fell from 12,471 last year to 12,130 this year, a decrease of 359 students. The totals for the 2014 year also include the students enrolled in the Culinary Arts Program in Punxsutawney along with the students in the Criminal Justice Training Center. The decline is not only affecting us here at IUP, as enrollment is down across the board in the state system schools. Pashi reported a decrease in total attendance of more than 2,000 students. The fifth annual Naka Latina celebration will take place on Saturday, October 18th, in the Hub Ohio Room as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. It will feature an evening of Hispanic food, music, and entertainment. The theme this year is Spain and Latin America, a fusion of two cultures. Tickets are available for advanced purchase for At The Door. This event is sponsored by the Hispanic Heritage Council, the Latino Student Organization, the Department of Foreign Languages, and the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Stars of the MTV documentary show, The Buried Life, Dave Lingwood and Duncan Penn spoke to students on Thursday, October 9th, in the Hub Ohio Room about their mishaps, endeavors, and travels across the country. The idea behind their show is to complete a list of things that they want to do before they die and help others with their bucket lists along the way. They want students to know that anything is possible if you just go out and make it happen. On one weekend every October, the Indiana community locks their doors for IUP's annual homecoming weekend. However, this year, the university created a busy schedule to bring the community and students closer together. The weekend contains several exciting events such as the homecoming parade, the Crimson Huddle, the homecoming football game, and a Monte Carlo night at the Kovalchik Center. The Monte Carlo night provided an alternative for partying on Saturday night, which tends to be the biggest partying night of the weekend. The university's attempts to reconnect the community and the students has proven to be very rewarding following the successful homecoming schedule. Now for a short break when we return, more local news followed by your weekly sports update. your cup. March is National Nutrition Month, the perfect time to make a healthy change in your life. The next time you're thirsty, reach for a water instead of a sugary soda. This simple choice will cut 10 teaspoons of sugar and over 100 calories from your diet. Want to increase your water consumption? Keep a water bottle handy throughout the day. Try adding a small amount of 100% fruit juice to your water for a tasty, refreshing, low-calorie drink. You can also add fruit to your water for extra flavor without the added sugar. Thanks, Landon. This weekend was IUP's homecoming game against Seton Hill. This game was a lot closer than expected. IUP led by only two with 11 minutes remaining in the game. The Hawks then went off and scored three more touchdowns, 
while shutting down Seton Hill's offense. IUP's third-string tailback surprised fans this weekend as well by tying the school's record for most touchdowns scored in the game under a certain period of time. IUP's next game will be on Saturday against Cal U. Both IUP and Cal U have 5-1 and one records, so it's going to be a good one. Steeler fans are very upset after getting dominated 10-31 by their rival, the Cleveland Browns. The Browns were down by three early on, but this didn't last long. The Steelers attempted to make a comeback in the fourth quarter, but it was just a little bit too late. This is Roethlisberger's second time losing to the Browns. The Steelers will try to get back on track next Monday against the Titans. I'm Steve, and that was your sports news, Indiana. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for the recap, Steve. When we return, we have another report, more news, and your entertainment update. Once is nice, but take home half and enjoy it twice. Restaurant portions can be large. When you start to feel full, don't hesitate to ask for a box to take home part of your meal. Then you can enjoy it a second time. For more information on making healthy food choices every day, go to eatright.org. It's one choice you won't regret. Make sure to refrigerate your leftovers as soon as possible. The IUP Voices of Joy is an inspirational choir that sings on IUP's campus and travels throughout the Pennsylvania region. Organizing a bake sale is just one of the ways the members of VOJ present themselves on campus. For more information on the choir, please visit their Facebook page at IUP Voices of Joy. Well, that's all from the Hub. I'm Maya Cryer. Back to you in the studio. Welcome back to IUP News Center. Officials from IUP, the Indiana Borough, White Township, and Indiana County formed the IACT to look for ways to minimize disruptive celebrations in the community this past summer. IUP officials know it's homecoming weekend, but thankfully had a quiet night on Thursday. IUP officials had a press conference on Friday, which is the first of four scheduled on Mondays at noon. Law officials from IUP, Indiana Borough, White Township, and Indiana County look for ways to minimize disruptive gatherings and celebrations. Improved communications between the agencies help put new preparations in place since the rowdy St. Patrick's Day weekend in Indiana last March. Indiana Borough Police received 45 calls Thursday night for service, up about 27 calls from the usual Thursday night. This year, borough officials and police will be trying to disperse large outdoor parties of students instead of allowing them to move to another place. Indiana Police Chief William Sutton said borough residents were annoyed and alarmed at the celebrations in March. This weekend was IEP Homecoming 2014, filled with lots of events and activities. But an event that a lot of people didn't know about is Alternative Homecoming. Hosted by members of the Victory Christian Assembly in Indiana, Pennsylvania, the Alternative Homecoming consisted of musical expressions such as miming and singing from choirs such as the IUP Voices of Joy, Penn State Harrisburg, and Punxsutawney Campus. The event ended with food and dancing. Students raved that a Monte Carlo night was the best alternative for having a safe and fun homecoming. Monte Carlo night was to be held in the Coal Chick Center on Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. This was the second year that the Center of Student Life has hosted Monte Carlo night. Nearly 20 student volunteers and over 500 students attended the event. Students received $10,000 in play money for the night, which was used to raffle with and win big some of the big prizes included. Beats by Dr. Dre headphones, bikes, an iPad mini, smart TV, Pittsburgh Penguins tickets, and gift cards were all offered to win. 
The Center of Student Life enjoys hosting this event because students stay safe while still having a lot of fun. And now for your latest in entertainment news. Kelly is here to give us the scoop. Kelly. The 2013 Walt Disney movie, Frozen, has accumulated enough gross income to be considered the highest grossing animated film of all time. Their influence in the entertainment world is massive. Just about everyone has heard the song, Let It Go, and we know what princess every little girl wants to be for Halloween. Frozen's influence has even reached brides to be because now women are taking pictures of the Snow Queen's dress and showing it to their, showing it to their designers requesting that their wedding dress be fit for a queen. The child star Raven Simone's Where Are They Now interview with Oprah is, create, is creating quite a stir on social media. Raven told Oprah that she did not want to be labeled as gay or an African American. She says that she is a colorless woman who loves humans. Her statements are conjuring up questions of her pride in her race and sexuality. Raven may have just lost a huge amount of her, friend, her fan base. The horror movie Annabelle is getting mixed reviews from the public. One thing we aren't getting mixed reviews about is the fact that the real story is scarier than the movie. Lorraine Warren, who inspired the movie, keeps the killer doll locked in a box at her museum. There is a sign which warns that box should never be open. This is, a, to, this is to ensure safety because there is believed to be an evil, inhuman spirit living inside the doll. It has been reported that people who taunt the dial have experienced near-death phenomenon or tragic incidents. It makes you want to think twice about your beliefs in the paranormal. That's all the entertainment news this week. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Kelly. Well, that's all the time we have tonight. So on behalf of IUP News Center, I'm Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. Make sure to tune in next week for more Grade A news. Good night.